Hello, my dear students. Welcome. We are going to discuss on this module neurodegenerative disorders. Let's have a look. What are the disorders we are going to discuss? Number one is Parkinsonism, which is associated with deficiency of dopamine and excess of acetylcholine. Next is Alzheimer's, which is associated with acetylcholine deficiency. Again, the next one is Huntington Chorea, in which there is dopamine overactivity. Two more disorders, a myotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, and multiple sclerosis, that's MS. And lastly, Wilson disease, which is associated with copper accumulation. Let's start with Parkinson. I hope you are conversant with Parkinson pathology, that's degeneration of neurons in the substantia nigra and the nigrostriatal pathway, leading to dopamine deficiency and acetylcholine excess. The classical symptoms of Parkinson include cogwheel rigidity, akinesia or bradykinesia, flat facies or the mask facies, and tremor. And the other symptoms also include droopy or stooped posture, instability, shuffling gait, seborrhea, sialuria, and drooling. I hope you remember this is all acetylcholine excess, in coordination of movements, and the typical pill rolling motion. For Parkinson, because there is dop dopamine deficiency in acetylcholine excess, the approach is to work on the dopaminergic system or to work on the cholinergic system. So we start with classifying the drugs. Number A is the drugs affecting the dopaminergic system. Under the drugs affecting dopaminergic system, the first one is dopamine precursor, that's levodopa. The next approach is to inhibit the peripheral dopa decarboxylase enzyme, that's peripheral dopa decarboxylase inhibitors in the form of carbidopa and benzodiazide. The next approach would be to give direct dopaminergic agonist which would go in, into the central nervous system and stimulate the dopaminergic receptors. They include bromocryptin, pergolide and piripedil. They are the older ergot agents. And you also have newer non-ergot agents that's ropinirol and pramipexol. Next, we move on to the catechol omicyl transferase inhibitors, COMT inhibitors. COMT is an enzyme which is going to break down levodopa in the periphery. You can use COMT inhibitors, tolcapon and entacapon. The next approach is to inhibit the breakdown of dopamine by giving MAO B inhibitors, monoamine oxidase B inhibitors, selegilin. Then you think of stimulating the dopaminergic transmission by giving dopamine facilitator, that's amantadine. So there are various approaches working on the dopaminergic system. The next system is cholinergic system because there is acetylcholine excess. We try to block the cholinergic receptors in the central nervous system. So drugs affecting cholinergic system obviously include central anticholinergic drugs in the form of very important compound trihexyphenidyl, which is also called benzexol. Apart from this, there is procyclidine, bipyridine and benztropin. And next you have some antihistaminic agents, H1 antihistaminic agents which have got a predominant anticholinergic property like promethazine, orphinadrine, and diphenhydramine. So this is the classification based on the dopaminergic system and the cholinergic system. Look at this slide. There is deficiency of dopamine. So what do we do? Give dopamine? Hmm, not possible. Because dopamine doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. We need to do something for this. And what we do is we use levodopa, which is a prodrug which is precursor of dopamine, this levodopa can cross the blood-brain barrier. So it will cross the blood-brain barrier and after going inside, it will get converted into dopamine. This is how dopamine will be made available. And the enzyme which will convert levodopa into dopamine will be dopa decarboxylase enzyme, which is also called L-aromatic amino acid decarboxylase, abbreviated as AAAD, aromatic amino acid decarboxylase. So, we give levodopa because levodopa is a prodrug. This can cross blood brain barrier and after going inside, we will get converted into dopamine. What are the actions, beneficial actions of levodopa in Parkinson? The effects are on the D1 and D2 receptors and out of all the symptoms of Parkinson, levodopa produces better response as far as hypokinesia and rigidity is concerned. These two things respond better than the tremors. Tremors is mainly due to the cholinergic excess and levodopa is acting in the dopaminergic system. So hypokinesia and rigidity 
they respond better then the next substance the the next symptom which responds is posture the gait the handwriting speech the facial expression all these things improve and finally the behavior leading to a general alerting response the next action is on the cardiovascular system i hope by this time you appreciate levodopa is going to get converted into dopamine dopamine will be formed in the periphery this will act on the beta receptors and this is why you can get tachycardia and palpitation in the periphery so that will be the action of levodopa on the cvs so also this particular dopamine will have a central action and i hope it will be an inhibitory action i hope you remember so central action of dopamine is going to lead to postural hypertension so you commonly see postural hypertension with levodopa next the dopamine which is going to be formed in the brain is going to act on the various tissues in the central nervous system there is one tissue which is outside the blood brain barrier this is also going to get affected and that's chemo receptor trigger zone this will be stimulated and this will lead to nausea and vomiting so also dopamine inhibits the prolactin secretion so as far as endocrine system is concerned l dopa is going to decrease the prolactin release how breakdown of levodopa takes place let's have a look at this in the periphery as well as brain l dopa gets broken down by two enzymes the first one is comt that's catechol o methyl transferase and levodopa is broken down by comt into 3o methyl dopa the second enzyme as we just discussed is dopa decarboxylase levodopa will be converted into dopamine by the enzyme dopa decarboxylase in the brain as well as in the periphery so these are the two enzymes comt and the dopa decarboxylase this particular matter we are going to extract it more we are going to build up upon this particular matter during our later discussion let's come to the adverse effects of levodopa in the beginning when levodopa is started the common adverse effects are the dopamine producing the adverse effects of nausea and vomiting postural hypertension cardiac arrhythmias and precipitation of angina when l dopa is continued for longer periods of time that's on prolonged therapy it could lead to abnormal movements and these abnormal movements could be dose limiting and the movements are in the form of, form of tics or the choreoathetoid movements the second adverse effect on prolonged therapy is the behavioral effects of levodopa and this is in the form of anxiety nightmares and vivid dreams disturbances of sleep depression hallucinations confusion and psychosis i hope you remember all this is due to dopamine is due to the dopamine formed in the central nervous system because it's psychosis it's hallucinations it's anxiety all the behavioral effects of dopamine next on prolonged therapy the patient gets fluctuations in the motor performance and this happens when l dopa is continued over a period of 2 to 5 years let's go to the details of the fluctuations in motor performance what is this fluctuations in the motor performance this can happen by two ways in the two forms the first one is called end of dose deterioration this is like a wearing off phenomenon and this happens due to a gradual development of tolerance to levodopa so you need to remember levodopa reduces tolerance on long term use and that's called wearing off the effect or the end of dose deterioration the second effect of levodopa as far as the fluctuations in motor performance is concerned is called on off phenomenon or is called switches and as the disease progresses you know there's degeneration and in this situation the corpus striatum starts secreting dopamine on a moment to moment basis and this is why you get fluctuations rapid fluctuations in the levels of dopamine so that's called on off phenomena sometimes the level is high sometimes the level is too low and as you know the half life of dopamine is very short that's about 1 to 2 hours so obviously you would get a rapid fluctuation and this is called switches or on off phenomena what is on and what is off on is the patient's mobility is near normal because the dopamine levels are almost normal and off is when the dopamine levels are too less the patient is even unable to rise from a chair that's a very classical symptom of parkinson disease so that's off means the patient is worsening so you get two types of fluctuations in motor performance one is end of dose deterioration and the second one is on off phenomenon what to do for this fluctuations in motor performance do you have an answer for this yes there are two answers for this number one to minimize the fluctuations 
You could use COMT inhibitors, that is catcol o transferase inhibitors in the form of tolcapon and tacapon. And second one is use long-acting dopaminergic agonists.